Okay, it's the second half of our video. As I was saying when the first half abruptly ended, is each of these brackets has uh, one, two, three, four bolts on it that connects to the door. And what's interesting about these brackets on the left side and again on the right side is unlike the center bracket that holds two panels, which is just a bracket, when you get to the left side and the right side, this uh, panel not only holds two brackets, but it also holds a pulley. Excuse me, it holds a, uh, a roller, and that roller is rolling up inside this steel gauge track, and that, of course, is what balances the door. So let me take a quick video of that, and you'll actually see the rollers rolling inside this track. There you go. Now the door is open again. A few other details, just for your information, on other brackets. And I'll define which of all these brackets you guys actually need to design uh, using still photos. So here's a bracket all the way on the bottom, which looks like it's doing nothing. What that's really designed to do is if your door is uh, on manual and it's mostly closed, you can basically take your foot and push down on the bracket, get your door closed. Here's another bracket only appearing on the right side of the door that says that if you're on manual mode, there's no power to your motor and you want to at least go to sleep at night. This, of course, is with no power in your house. You can take this latch and shut it. And now what happens is when if, if anyone tries to manually open the door, essentially that bracket or that uh, tab right here, which is sitting in a slot right there, is going to prevent the whole door from opening. But you never actually engage this slot in the closed position unless you have no electricity, because you can imagine if I tried to open the door now, it would uh, jam in about a quarter of a second. So we normally keep that latch open. And I'm showing you the right side of the door, but it's a symmetric problem, and for any calculation you do, you just have to do it once. But just be, be advised that the entire load of the door is shared uh, left and right, so that uh, you're pulling up on the door, but you got roughly equal forces on left and right side of the door and exactly the same mechanism that's balancing the door and essentially keeping the whole door from wanting to rotate left or right as it opens. Because the only way you're going to get this door open with that motor and that slider system is if you can balance the forces and the moments with the track on the left and the track on the right so that all of the horsepower of that motor goes into opening the door, not into a uh, massive jam or, or a large amount of friction. So there's my wife coming home. She's probably wondering what I'm doing, why I'm standing here in the garage. You can say hello for the camera, dear, at least if you know I'm talking. And uh, you can uh, wave a little bit. See, doors opening. Oh, she's getting out of the car, wondering why is her husband filming the garage? Hmm. So, I think that's probably enough uh, to define the system. I'm gonna do one more open and shut of the door, just so you can actually see that mechanism, see that chain, and even hopefully in this camera angle, Watch the uh, pulley mechanism, or excuse me, watch the sprocket mechanism work for the chain. And then we'll go to the other side, and you'll actually see on this side, you're actually seeing the chain pull the door open. And you can see there's still about a foot and a half air gap between the top of the door and my uh, garage door mechanism, probably about six inches between the slider and the box that holds the motor. 
You can imagine with this level of control system from 30 years ago, you wouldn't want the parts to get too close because uh, one crash and uh, that's it for this mechanism. Okay, and then one more time to close the door. And for whatever reason, my door is rebelling. It doesn't want to close. So I think I will close the video here and figure out later why my door no longer works. Bye.